My name is Sarah Gray and I'm an analyst here at Harlem Media. To start off in 2023, we saw an overall 4.5% increase in our holiday retail sales up from 3.9% just last year. According to Deloitte's economic forecaster, we are seeing healthy employment and income growth to keep the volume of sales growing. Inflation accounted a lot for the increase in the value of sales last year, which means that the total value of retail sales grew significantly slower this year compared to last. It's also worth mentioning we are seeing a decreasing pool of pandemic era savings, which will weigh on retail sales and are reflected in the lower projected growth we saw this past holiday season. It's safe to say that retail shopping sees a big jump in spending during the holiday season. Whether it's buying gifts for a significant other, kids, parents, friends, it's a time where we want to spoil the people we love. However, this season we saw a different way consumers are spending their money and it's actually on themselves. The average shopper expected to spend $298 on their biggest purchase of the holiday season. However, they also plan to spend $295 just on themselves. When I read the stat, I was very curious as to what consumers bought for themselves this season, and it turns out we saw 28% of consumers spending on clothing, followed by 24% on electronics. It's also worth mentioning that one in four shoppers who have seen a clothing ad have made a purchase immediately after. We are also seeing consumers buying gift cards, toys, and jewelry as other common purchases for gifts this season, whether it be for themselves or for family and friends. Now, before anyone is pulling the trigger on a purchase, many research the best places to find those gifts. When it comes to researching gift purchasing options, many consumers are more focused on reasonable prices and promotions, followed by product availability and convenience. However, these specifications and forms of research all differ based on generation. The four main buckets of research we are seeing, as you can see on the chart, are social media, retailer emails, brand websites, and a retailer's website or app. It's safe to say that retailer websites and apps are the most used when researching gift options. However, social media does not fall far behind in this race, especially for Gen Z. Even though we are seeing a shift in consumers relying on online channels more than ever, the in-store experience is still very important. 85% of consumers still expected to purchase at least one item in store with baby boomers and millennials having this be one of their bigger priorities and their holiday shopping this past season. Now, once you know what and where you are planning on purchasing your gifts this year, consumers find themselves at a crossroad as to go for the online option or an in-store purchase. If you turn your attention to the omni-channel chart we have on the screen, you'll see that the green indicates in-store purchases with gray indicating online. This past season, we saw a huge jump in in-store purchases being arguably larger than even pre-pandemic numbers in 2019, with 47% planning on shopping in person. It's also worth noting that we are definitely seeing e-commerce growth plateau, staying at a consistent 62 to 63 percent between 2021 and today. Of course, we cannot be blind to the many financial pressures consumers felt this past year when making their gift purchasing decisions. Even though inflation may be moderating, budget conscious behaviors definitely stuck around this season. 42% of consumers planned on purchasing fewer gifts this past holiday season, followed by 40% focused on finding deals and discounts. Now we are actually seeing a new trend this past season in holiday shopping, which is the application of tech assisted shopping. We are no strangers to the growth that AI has seen this past year. While only about 20% of consumers represent those who are utilizing AI in their holiday shopping, these consumers are using AI for customer service support, gift recommendations, purchasing, and researching. Another 20% of consumers that have not been as integrated into AI yet claim that they would be interested in learning more, while 19% still don't know enough about it, which makes sense since this is such a new topic. This, so this is a really great time to educate your consumers on the possibilities AI has to offer them and how it can make their lives quote unquote easier. Now that we've taken a look at a few of the trends that we saw in holiday spending this past year, let's take a look at projected and actualized holiday spend. Regardless of the financial pressures that we are seeing, sales are actually still up year over year. However, they fell below forecast on major retail spending days like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. These lower actualized spending numbers do align with how consumers are feeling. 
Stress consumers are relying on savings for shopping and definitely facing more pressure from credit card debt, which has been on the rise as Bernie touched on earlier. Even though we expected consumers to spend more this season than last, the pace of spending is very slow with only a 3% growth compared to last year's 5.4%. Regardless, consumers still spent around $9.8 billion on Black Friday, which is a 7.5% jump from last season. Additionally, online sales rose 8.5%, while in-store were only up 1.1%. So now fast forward to where we are today. As While well, all the sales data for the recently completed holiday season isn't in just yet, Adobe data for online sales indicate consumers spent more than anticipated, hitting record highs for online shopping, along with record highs for discounts, mobile shopping, and buy now, pay later platforms. While holiday spending trends change each year, we can safely say that even though there are new trends and purchasing considerations, consumers still want to spoil the ones that they love and themselves through gift giving.